All right. I have the legend, Linda Murray, Miss Olympia. That is eight time Miss Olympia, right? That's right. Eight. I earned every one of them. Eight. Eight time Miss Olympia. Wow. Eight. It is a, it is an honor to have you on. I don't know if you watched uh, my show, but I've had plenty of your peers on. Yes. Yes. And, I've and, watched. Oh, okay. Good. Good. I've had plenty, plenty, plenty of your peers on. And it is just an honor to have a Miss Olympia. Cause I had a Mr. Olympia on at Jay Cutler on. Mm-hmm. And now I have Miss Olympia on. Yeah. So I've reached the pinnacle of bodybuilding interviews. Oh, that's great. Yeah, well, you do a great job. We would, Thank you. We would not accept the invitation. <laughs> you know. Thank you so much. I that's really, right. really, really appreciate it. So this is your first time on. So I want to start from the beginning. So as we were talking before, you grew up in Detroit. Mm-hmm. So what was your, your childhood like in Detroit? <laughs> Mm, my childhood in Detroit was uh, fabulous, entertaining. Um, I could say almost like a little bit um, hardcore, like I wouldn't change anything. Uh, it's a big part of like my foundation. And I grew up on the really tough side of Detroit, the east side, you mm-hmm. know, Um and I lived there all the way up through uh, sixth grade. Then my mom and dad, my father was hardworking, self-employed. He's an electrician, by the really? way. Really? That's yeah. fantastic. All right. And good. So I know about you. I've heard, you know, I heard your interview. And so. Uh, okay. Yeah. Great. So I grew up with the, uh, all my dad's uh, brothers. Um, they were electricians and again, self-employed. And he moved to, we moved to a better side of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Still people consider to be a tough side. It's like right right at that eight mile area. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You cross eight mile. Okay, right. You're near eight mile. You're like still on a tough, rough side. Okay. But I had a great childhood, you know. Um, Great uh, that my father is self-employed because I learned a lot from him. Mm-hmm. And that helped me to, to thrive, I think, in this industry and um, just got into fights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the oldest of I oh. have sisters. I'm the See, oldest. So I had to take care of them. Yeah. You got to protect them. Yes. Yeah. I had to yeah. be that badass. So I, really, <laughs> I, I practiced a lot being a badass. Okay. To be honest with you, you know, trying to be tough. So. But yeah, it was and your, great. Your dad was an electrician and your mom was a stay-home mom? That's right. Stay-home mom. She did a great job. She was... Uh, you and I have a lot in church. common. You said what? You and I have a lot in common. Mm-hmm. Stay-at-home like, mom. Yeah. Yeah. My father was an electrician and my mother was a stay-at-home mom and she dragged me to church every Sunday. <laughs> That's it. Every Sunday, especially me. I just totally wasn't feeling it. But Yeah, I hated it. Yeah, I learned a lot. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate because I truly believe that family is the backbone of a good society, Mm -hmm. and uh, family is falling apart. Oh yeah, Yeah. oh yeah, that's a whole. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, so it's falling apart, and and both sides, men and women, are are to blame. I mean, it's it's not like oh oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. But uh, okay, so what got you into? Bodybuilding, I'm assuming you were an athlete, maybe in high school or something. Yeah. Um, well, what got me into bodybuilding athlete all through um, high school and college, a collegiate cheerleader for four years. And I went on to be a professional cheerleader with the USFL Michigan Panthers. Really? It's USFL team, Michigan Panthers. We won that first, uh, the USFL championships. Uh, very cool. uh, the quarterback was um, Bobby A. Bear, wide receiver, Anthony Carter. So we got a lot of big names that came out of, some of them out of the NFL, some of them leaving college and they were drafted right into the USFL. But uh, yeah, just um, I think probably for me, athletics really started in Detroit because I had to learn to run. I was really fast and (laughs) um, just running through the streets. I knew I had a lot of speed. I had um, powerful quads and hamstrings. I was just really fast. So it started with track and field. 
you know, ran track in um, high school, but I was really, I excelled at cheerleading. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then what led into bodybuilding? Uh, what led into bodybuilding is, is that when you're used to being a part of, of an organization, you know, you're disciplined and um, something was missing when I graduated from, from college, you mm. know, um, I wanted to stay in shape. So I joined the powerhouse gym. Famous powerhouse gym. The original powerhouse gym? The original oh, powerhouse that gym. that is Will amazing. Will Davish. The wow. Davishes. The real powerhouse gym on uh, Six Mile in Highland Park. And um, that was my first introduction to seeing bodybuilders and okay. the world of bodybuilding. And the first bodybuilder I met was Ron Love. <laughs> that's, a, that's incredible. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So when I walked in the gym, I'm within about three days, Ron Love came up to me and he just said to me, you know, you should really consider competing in bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. And it was very foreign to me, honestly. Um, I was so used to outdoor activities, you know football and track and field and stuff like that and being in a gym and eating crazy foods tossing the mm -hmm. yolk and egg whites and the, like all of that was just kind of bizarre to me okay now but for people i probably have a lot of people <clears throat> that are not from our generation so Let's let's break this down because if 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 somebody twenty five years old is watching this, they're thinking today. Mm -hmm. But this is happening in what in the eighties? Yeah. Okay, this is happening in the eighties. Yes. And and the powerhouse in Detroit, it was not your uh, fancy schmancy gym that you go to today. Yes. No, this yeah. was a hardcore. The boys are banging and clanging weights, music blasting, like you had animals in there. Right. Oh, we, yeah. We had gyms like that in, in Brooklyn and Staten Island and so on and so forth. And then on top of that, there was only one category for women back then. Right. And mm -hmm. that was only bodybuilding. And that was only just, bodybuilding. That's it. Just just bodybuilding. Fitness wasn't just even there yet. No, no. no. Okay. Definitely. Fitness didn't even show up, come around till much later. Yeah. I think we spent about maybe, I don't know, maybe like. I want to say close to 10 years mm -hmm. before an additional division came on for men or women. Okay. You know? Okay. But yeah, it was hardcore. Yeah. It was hardcore, you know, and I like, I really like love it that way. I still love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Feel. Yeah. Cause what's considered hardcore today is a gym that, yeah, no, no. Yeah. I wouldn't consider it <laughs> hardcore. The hardcore gyms in, in Brooklyn, you had fifth Avenue gym. And of course, you had Fer Ferrigno's gym. Lou Ferrigno opened the gym and you had Fifth Avenue gym and then you had Bath Avenue gym. You didn't really want to go to Bath Avenue gym unless you were okay. like, unless you were like a mafia associate because you would catch a beating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and then um, and then when you, well, like when you moved to Staten Island, then you had, um, there was a pumping iron gym and it was also a, a uh, for another Ferrigno's gym. And then all then after some time, all the goals and New York sports mm -hmm. clubs and they all, all started, right. they started popping up. But those gyms you went to, it was dirty. Yes. It was, it was usually a basement or the windows were foggy from mm -hmm. everybody's breathing inside the gym. Mm -hmm. it, it was mildewy smelling. Yeah. No air conditioning. There was no air conditioning. Um, and there was huge speakers on the wall. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes, sometimes and, and, and hardcore music blasting. Uh -huh. And uh, sometimes you had to be careful where you step because there were holes in the floor mm -hmm. and there was even holes in the in the, uh, the padding that they put down on the from people dropping weights and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. that's the way it was. So if you were a girl mm -hmm. in, the, in that gym, you were pretty brave. Yes, I agree <laughs> with you. I agree with you. Matter of fact, I think I was. Probably one of the, I'm going to say first, like there was maybe five other women in the gym at the time. Mm -hmm. No, uh, but you, you are so correct about that. You could not be uncomfortable 
around men. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's where I learned so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so Ron, so Ron Love approaches you and says, you'd be good at a bodybuilding. You should do a show. So what was your first show and how long did it take him to convince you to do it? Mm -hmm. Well, it took him, it took a year to convince me. Okay. Because I was actually there trying to like lose weight on my, in my thighs. I was, my goal was I wanted to be something that my body, my genetics said I was not. Mm -hmm. So I was in there, I'm, you know, doing abdominals, exercises, riding the bike. uh, And my girlfriend, she decided that she wanted to go into competition. So I kind of just checked her out and watched her. And it was about a year being around the athletes, watching what they ate. And um, so it took a year. I went to my first bodybuilding competition to watch. And that's when I got the idea, well, this is something I can do. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm comfortable being performing in front of an audience. It looked kind of looked pretty easy. They weight train and, you know, I didn't think very much about the diet. But um, and I saw a major change in her physique and mm-hmm. her upper body because women, you know, I had those powerful, th- powerful thighs, but I did not to see a woman with shoulders and see separation or biceps and triceps. And I'm like, wow, that's kind of interesting. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So it took, it took a full year because I was still focused on trying to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. And, and were you doing that full time at the time? No. Well, the USFL was coming to a close. Mm-hmm. So when this USFL football organization came about, I was already like, cause in the seventies, if you remember that whole Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders and um, they did this whole thing on the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I want to be a professional cheerleader, mm-hmm. but I didn't have the, um, the, I, my physique was not that of a bikini competitor. Right. right, right. I, that's basically what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. I was, Look, I look more like a women's physique competitor without all the definition. And I'm trying to get my thighs down to what a bikini right. competitor. Okay. And my body was just like, no, well, what happening. happened? Right. Not right. happening. Not happening. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, and yeah. what year, so what, year first, what year was all this? All this was in. Um, so I first walked in the gym in 1984. I compete the first time in 1985 and it took four years before I actually won a show, won the Miss Michigan. And I had a tough time with that. um, The diet. Mm. Well, join the club. Yeah. 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 So you win the, you win the show in, if that was 84 and 88, Yes, I won the Miss Michigan in 1988. Good math. Okay, yeah, really, right. And uh, that was an NPC show? Yes, it was an NPC show. It was the Michigan State Championships. I finally won that. I competed in it four times. Oh, okay. I won it on my fourth attempt. And you won the whole thing. And then from there, what did that catapult you to? Then that catapulted me to a, a regional show. I did the Grand Rapids uh it was uh, Great Lakes, the Great Lakes Championships. And then I won that. That was in, in 1988. And then so I did those two shows, the Michigan, the uh, uh, Great Lakes Championships. And then I went on the following year to the Junior Nationals, won the Junior Nationals in 1989 in June. And then that September, I competed in North American in 89, and I won the North American in turn pro. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, again, for people who don't know, uh, it wasn't like you had to win the whole overall. You had to win everything to turn pro. Yep. Had uh, to win everything. Yeah, One win person. Everything. Like the junior, the, junior, the junior nationals, no pro card. No pro card mm-hmm. whatsoever. North no. American, only the overall winner. That's right. Yeah. So it was one a, person. Yeah. One woman walked away with her pro card. That was me. That's right. And so from then, from there, you you were back then you were able to just go right into a pro career and be competitive. 
mm-hmm. b- because they only pick the cream of the crop. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. where today it's still difficult, but the, the pro cards are a little bit more prevalent. You know, you get them for winning the class or first and second in the class. And mm-hmm. it kind of creates like this tier uh, category in pro bodybuilding. So you have the guys that are, you know, okay, you take some time or maybe they'll never make it as a pro. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like going from college football to the NFL. It's like, oof, that's right. You know, and then some of them shoot right to the top. But in your day, if you won, you went, you were a competitive bodybuilder in the professional ranks immediately. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it was, it was still even really competitive in the sense that even though I won and there were only, I think, uh, maybe five pros to come out that year as far as the women, because the only way you go pro and by winning your class, you had to compete at the nationals, mm-hmm. right? So that's how the light, lightweights, bantamweights, whatever, got their pro card. But the next upcoming show was Arnold Schwarzenegger's show, the Arnold Classic. Mm-hmm. And you had to be invited. That's right. Okay. And because I didn't really have the name yet, I kind of came from like nowhere. Like if you lived in Michigan and you know, you know, you knew right. my name or you knew of me. So I wasn't invited to the Arnold's, to the Miss International, mm, okay. 1990. And women's bodybuilding. It's been, it was challenging. We were still having a tough time with being recognized or appreciated or lifted up or whatever you want to call it. And there were limited women bodybuilding shows. Mm-hmm. Like Miss Olympia existed, but as far as pro shows, the only one would be, it was the Jan Tana, it was the Miss International. And you had to qualify to get to the Olympia by, you know, those shows. So Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So then what was the first pro show you did? So the first pro show I did was the Miss Olympia. Get out of here, really? Yeah, and I won. How did, how did that happen? <laughs> that how was did, my first pro show. So you, how did you get, how were you able to go and jump right into the Miss Olympia? Because that year... They did not have enough shows for the women. And they decided, Wayne DeMilla and that group decided to open the Miss Olympia, to make it open to pros. So that year, there were 29 uh, pro women that found a way to get to the Olympia, those that actually qualified by uh, competing in, in the Miss International that year. And the rest of us, we paid our own way. I made it to New York and I made it to the Beacon Theater with with help. And I won my first first pro show and it happened to be the Miss Olympia. So as soon as you turned pro, you shot to the top immediately. Yes. So so did you ever go back and talk to Ron Love and say thank you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely. Matter of fact, he was he was actually there in New York backstage. And, you know, it was weird because um, so many people did not believe it just wasn't possible in their heads. You know, all my friends and family and everybody in Michigan, because if you were in a bodybuilding uh, community, you knew that the champion, like, it's Corey Everson. And Corey Everson retired in 89. Oh. So no matter how good I looked, it was no way you were on that level. Like, that's how, that was the feeling I was getting. Right. From people. right, right. When I won, it literally blew everyone away. Mm. Everything changed. Okay. You know? And did you win eight in a row? No, I won. I won six in a row, mm-hmm. and then comes a uh, badass Kim Shazewski. Oh my God! He yeah, my ass. Oh, I forgot about her. <laughs> and on my seventh attempt, and on my eighth attempt, I play second. Oh, that's got. So hurt. I had six straight, and then two second place followed. And she beat you both times. She beat me both times. Oh, that had that had to hurt. Yeah, she was. I mean, I, I'm gonna tell you when she beat me the first time, that hurt. You mm. know, you know what I mean. 
The second time, because the first time it was like, I wasn't even prepared. I just, I have such a clear memory of standing on stage and um, being like, you could see, like I could see her. Because you know, when you're the champion, you're supposed to like, not really pay attention or act like you're not paying attention to the other athletes. Right, right, right. But you know where people are, logistic, mm -hmm. you know, and it was something about her that when she, you know, I, I watched her when she walked up and she was being compared, like when she walked up and she didn't move, she was rock hard. Mm. Like, and I'm like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as yeah. you saw it, you're like, Shit. yeah, I was shocked. I mean, that was that experience, you know, like people want to, they always want to talk about me and uh, Iris Kyle, but I, I say to them, listen, like I have memories of, of my challenging times on the stage. And that was sticks clear in my memory mm. to this day. Whatever happened to her? Um, you know, I think what is she still Kim, around the game or no? Oh yeah. Well, you know, Kim's married to Chad Nichols. Oh God. You see, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I and do. She, she's, she's, um, they're, they run the, um, I'm pretty sure they run the state of Missouri mm, Yeah. and okay. he's the chairman. Um, so they're very much involved, but Didn't she he train her. Pardon. Didn't he train her? Oh yeah, oh, that, and that's why, and that's why I hired him to help me on my return when I came back. So I retired for five years after that second place of her, and I knew uh -huh. I was like, I, I don't have what it takes to beat her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I had lost a lot. Um, so when I decided to come back and compete in two thousand and two, um, I talked to. A, close friend Bill Dobbins and he said why don't you reach out to Chad Nichols and I'm like that's Kim Shazewski's husband right but no reach out to him and I did and uh Chad is the person that uh helped me to pull it together to bring me up to speed mm. in 2002 and 2003 so I won my seventh in 2002 and the eighth in 2003 now was Kim in those contests or no no, Kim, Kim retired. She retired. Okay. She, um, she won four Miss Olympias mm -hmm. and then she retired, had babies. She has two beautiful kids. Okay. That are, one's in bodybuilding now. So. So when you first won, you shot to the top in 1990. Um, did it seem did you take advantage of the situation, the fact that you shot to the top and, it, and you kind of just winning, winning, winning? And then when you came back in 2002, did you appreciate it more? Or did you just appreciate the run the whole time? Oh, my God. You know, literally, great question, because the person that you see in the 90s is a different person than the woman you saw in 2002, 2003. Um, I had such an appreciation for the sport and, and the opportunity to compete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, I deal with that a lot with, with athletes now. Um, I go to a lot of shows all year long and all the, you know, the athletes are all happy on Thursday and Friday and then after prejudging, if they're not in that first call out, they're really disappointed. And it's one of those things where they say, um, you know, sometimes they want to say they're going to retire and they're young. You know, I, I saw that in uh, Shanique Grant, the winner oh. of the Miss Olympia. And I thought. The physique, yeah. Is, you're going to miss it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but she wanted to have a family, right? Well, that's what she said. And I'm sure that's it's, you know, I don't think she's had, I mean, it's been what now going into our third year and it takes time, but I get that part, you know, I mean, 
Yeah. But yeah. but yeah, and she made that statement pretty early on. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I remember when that happened. Uh, I I questioned it myself too. Because mm -hmm. if you ever watch any of my, uh, uh, if you ever watch any of my stuff, I, I I don't. I very I diplomatically don't pull any punches, especially if I'm talking about somebody I respect. Yeah. Right. So I if if something happens, like if you watch the uh, the, the MD I did and we talked about Mike Crizzo. Uh, I very nicely pointed out that he was not ready for the Prague pro and yeah. he was sweating and his tan was running and he couldn't hold yes. his poses and so on and so forth. Yes. And I said that was unprofessional. And I remember when Shanique Grant decided to retire after uh, the second year. I don't remember the details, but I remember saying, yeah. 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 I don't remember the details exactly, but I remember questioning it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's, you always, I mean, we know. Anytime you hear an athlete and as soon as the competition is over with, like, and they lose, like within days, they make these statements, you know, that it's too soon to make those statements. Yeah. I can see if you make them prior to, if you said prior to this is going to be my last year, I'm going to stop, take a break. I'm going to have kids. But then when you lose mm -hmm. and now with social media, that's what happened. That's right. She lost that time. Right. Yeah. 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 You know what? Yeah. And, and that's one of the problems with social media is everybody goes through these feelings, right? Now I've competed, but never on a level like you, right? I've competed mm -hmm. on an NPC level. I was just, I just, I just genetically didn't have what it took. That was, that's the God's honest truth. But I remember, you know, losing uh, the open at the Brooklyn Grand Prix. And I was really angry because I really was gunning to win it and so on and so forth. But you know, you talk to your wife or you talk to your husband or you talk to your friends or you talk to your family, but you don't blow up social media because yeah. you have to realize that these are, these are phases you're going to go through and uh -huh. emotion and emotions cloud your, 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 your reasonable thinking. That's right? right. You know, you're like F this one, F that and everything's That's fixed right. and everything's, and you just got to like go, you know, and I remember the next day I spoke to her because I was really pissed. I spoke to Guy Del Corso who was, in New Jersey, he's like a fixture in bodybuilding, you know, um, and he 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 spoke to me and he told me, look, if you really want to do this, you have to work on A, B, C and D. And it made sense when he told me because it was an outsider telling me because when you're talking to your brother or you're talking to your wife, you yes. know, you know, it's more like they're on your side. So they're like, you know, it's all bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, mm -hmm. whatever. So, oh, we'll yeah. Get um, but yeah, so like these young guys that, uh, and I'm not going to mention name that blow up social media immediately after losing a show, stop doing that. Yes, please <laughs> Think it stop. through first. Think it through first. Give yourself a, a, a week <laughs> to mm -hmm. calm down, you know? Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So now during this whole time from 1990 to 2003, are you working or bodybuilding is making you a living? Yeah, I'm through well i was so blessed like there's a lot of things that really happened that benefit that i was i got to benefit from mm -hmm. one is in 1990 when i won my first miss olympia um vince mcmahon started the wbf oh I was a bodybuilding federation. i remember that i was a kid yeah mm -hmm. And when he did that, then there he created competition in the industry as far as Joe Weider and those guys. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, let's go in and let's give these athletes contracts. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I was one of them. And I think it was maybe three or four women. Mm -hmm. So I was immediately put under contract with um, uh, Weider Health and Fitness. Mm -hmm. I also was uh, had a contract with Hammer Strength Equipment Company, and I had a contract with uh, Powerhouse Gym International. Wow. So uh, overnight, I, things changed financially yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I pretty much stayed under contract with uh, Weeder Health and Fitness all the way up until 1998. Okay. okay. So um, that was really beneficial to me but it wasn't uh that wasn't the picture for most women bodybuilders mm -hmm. during that time so i was really blessed to be in that situation you know and i had uh steve carroll he was my manager stonecutter okay. production steve carroll okay 
I know. Yeah, he's a New Yorker. Okay. So he was, and he, you know, did a great job of getting me gigs. I did a lot of guest appearances and and that. So you were you yeah you were blessed and back then and even still to today. Mm-hmm. I mean, in comparison, uh, yes. Um, the the girl who is Miss Olympia is making money. Um, is getting some contracts, but the yes. and we're and we're talking we're talking bodybuilding, and there's a lot of different there's a lot of different classes, and this is one of the reasons why I respect women's bodybuilding. Well, first of all, because I'm a fan of bodybuilding, period. But one of the reasons why I respect women's bodybuilding so much, well, there's several reasons, but one of the reasons is you go against the grain. That's number one. You physically go against the grain. Most girls and most men don't appreciate that body type on a woman. Okay. But, and the majority of the population usually likes to follow suit. And, and so what I mean by that is like, before you were in bodybuilding, you really wanted to be this skinny girl. And if everybody remembers the eighties, the body type was skinny, skinny, skinny. Right. I mean, it was. Had a locklier and you go right. down the line, right? right. That was, then it went from in the 90s, it went from the Pam Anderson where every girl had giant boobs, yes. right? And now it is every girl has a giant butt, right? Yes. And they all follow the trend. Absolutely. But, but women's bodybuilding goes, fuck you, I'm doing my own thing. Absolutely. And that, and that is one of the one of the reasons I um uh, respect women's body. The other reason I respect women's bodybuilding so much is that you have to deal with, and it's worse now than it was in your day, because now not only do you have to deal with it uh, in public, but you have to deal with it on social media, the trolls and the insults that these Absolutely. girls go through. Oh so, and once again, these girls just go, doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. I have a, I have a goal and this is what I'm going to keep it up, keep going with it. Mm-hmm. Now, that being said, you were lucky enough to make a, a great living doing it. And I'm so sure Corey Everson was and Kim Kachevsky yes. and Iris Kyle. Yes. But the majority of girls don't. Correct. They do not. And a lot of the girls, and I'm not judging. Okay, of, I understand. I know where you're going. <laughs> yeah. A, a lot of the girls go down this slippery slope. And uh, one thing is I, I don't judge, but I don't condone it. Um, I agree. And I've interviewed set and and they they bring thousands of views on my small podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had you know girls that have done the the uh, muscle worship fetish femdom, and they are either pro or amateur bodybuilders that do it because they don't make enough money. Mm-hmm. And now, don't get me wrong, I've had wonderful professional bodybuilders that don't do it. And they have, and it, that blows me away even, even more so because I've, I've had girls that are at Leah Denny, who is, has a corporate job and she has a yes, corporate right. job and she's a professional about it. And then I've also That's had right. Jenny, she's a veter- veterinarian. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Her last I, name. I know who you're referring to. Yeah, I forget her last uh, name. Uh, Actually, we still keep in touch because I have a 14 year old pit bull that is not doing well. And <laughs> she tells me what to do. <laughs> nice. Um, but a lot of the girls, uh, they go down this, this rabbit hole and it is at first, it is just send me pictures of your feet. And then it's just flex for me. And then the ball starts rolling. And as the ball gets bigger, it gets faster and faster and faster. And then before you know it, you're doing these crazy, crazy things for money. Yeah. And they, and, and once you start make, once you start making big money doing it, it's difficult to turn down. Mm-hmm. And then you justify everything you're doing. Yeah. Luckily, you didn't have to do that. Yes, that's correct. Luckily, no. I didn't have to do that. I well, mean, yeah. What was your experience <laughs> with the girls that did that? And did you see it explode, if that, if that makes any sense, in their face yeah. or backfire? You know, I remember, you know, the phenomena of it, like early in my career where I met, was introduced, um, would get guys, men that would ask crazy questions. Like it starts with feet Mm -hmm. and questions of how size, how big are your biceps? And then 
you know, first it sounds like a normal conversation. You might start out with emails or because we didn't even do like emails back then, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but just the questions that you that I would get. And then I learned that these guys, you know, they really enjoy very strong women and being dominated. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, they wanted to arm wrestle and, and all of that. But it has really like exploded and grown and it's mm -hmm. more in the open. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but what I have to say about it is like, it's still baffling to me, not the guys who have the fetish, nor is it really baffling uh, for a woman to like, you know, she's strong and this guy wants to pay her three grand or whatever to wrestle. But when it comes to the nudity part, like as far as like porn, mm -hmm. like for me, see, that blows me away. Like, and the reason it does is because it's like, like we said, my father self was self-employed, right? And health and fitness is a huge industry. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different things you can do in health and fitness. That's right. You can't tell me that you're forced to do this. Like you have to do this. Right. Like right. to me, I just think it's the lazy, it's kind of a lazy, a lazy way. It's out. easy money. Easy money. It's easy money. That's what it is. It's easy money. It's and easy money. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's a little bizarre to me in the sense that I come from a background of being an athlete and rolling in a certain way in high school, being around high school, collegiate athletes. And there are a lot of collegiate athletes out there that go to the Olympics and they get sponsors and everything to get there. And they have to go through the same emotional things that we go through in transition of trying to find their way. What am I going to do now? How am I going to make a living? I don't hear this applause, but they don't go and do porn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. I don't know that many. I mean, so to me, like, it's just, it's, I don't really. So here's a question. It's an excuse. Do you think that there's a certain mindset that's originally set mm -hmm. for a woman who wants to do bodybuilding uh, and then the acceptance of doing these uh, kind of uh, uh, dark, uh, you know, femdom, muscle worship kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, in my experience, now I've interviewed a, a whole bunch of women. Mm -hmm. And I've interviewed some women that I, and I'm going to not going to name names. I've interviewed some women right. that, I, that I truly, truly respect mm -hmm. uh, like yourself. And then I've interviewed women that I go, okay, well, you kind of had this and you took it in a different direction. Right. And even though I'm interviewing the, and you know, I'm a bit of a hypocrite, right? Because I'm interviewing these girls and I'm kind of profiting off of it because they give me big views, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't condone it. And I kind of don't, it just leads to a life of debauchery. Yes, I it, agree. It leads to a life of debauchery and you, you're never going to be able to hold a, a good relationship, mm -hmm. right? Any man who is going to accept you doing this has to be a certain type of man and, and that man you're not going to be able to respect, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and for me, the thing is, you know, because even like with porn, like regular porn, I'd look and see when women, you know, making tons. And then they would say it's a lot of money. And I'm like, that's not really a lot of money. Like, what is it going to take for me to be on screen and be nude and have sex with somebody? A hundred grand, a million? Like, mm -hmm. like, it's still not a lot. It's not a lot of money to me. You right. know what I mean? And for me, I think the, the at the age that I'm at right now, and I see people putting their whole life into being this physical specimen, like you're in your twenties and you're like pretty yeah. much when you get there, like you're over the hill. No. Oh, yeah. And, the, and, so, and, and the girls, so then what? <clears throat> the girls. Yeah. It, it, I mean, this is a whole different conversation, but it's, it's, it's today with the um, uh, women empowerment and, 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 and body acceptance and, um, you know, uh, this sexuality being accepted, they don't realize what the future is going to hold. So there's an expression, yeah. there's an expression that I use, and it's not original. I got it from somebody else. 
And the, the expression is fast money equals slow problems. Mm-hmm. And uh, these girls, I interviewed a very, very popular uh, uh, adult entertainer actually two, two videos ago. And she actually told me that a lot of the, the internet uh, porn sites are not even going to the, uh, the girls that are established in the industry anymore. They've taken them right from Instagram and OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. And, and these are girls that are just like maybe have a hundred thousand followers and, you know, and they're like, Hey, you know, do you want to shoot? We can, you know, and they, and they, and they blow up their head and they're 21, 22, mm-hmm. 25. And um, they wind up doing this and they don't realize that that is forever. Forever. You can't take that off of the internet. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you know how difficult it is going to be for you to find a man that respects Mm-hmm. That you would know that you respect mm-hmm. and have a family with later on. Ugh. Oh yeah. It's it, tough. Yeah. I was uh, just at the uh, <laughs> rising Phoenix this past weekend and uh, a competitor mm-hmm. that someone walked up to me <laughs> and they were disappointed. They showed me a video of her having sex on camera. And like within 40 minutes, I go to the after party and she's there. And I just, I, I look and I just think, wow, it just changes the way I see. Well, you and I are from a different generation. You're the generation before me, and, but I'm this, I'm, I'm generation um, X. You're the generation before me. Yes. And we were brought up more traditional than mm-hmm. today's. Like I said, there was family and there was morals and there was values. And yeah. If there was a girl that, like in our time, it was the girl in the neighborhood that was sleeping around. Yeah. And, and, and the guys basically just used it to sleep around, mm-hmm. but they never took it serious. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like what's happening now on a large scale, because the more accepting you're going to be with this, it's, but it's still going to be a turnoff for, for any guy that respects himself or that you are going to respect. Because I truly believe that in order for a woman to love a man, she has to respect him. Mm-hmm. So the type of guy that's going to be able to accept this whole other world, because <clears throat> the, the way a guy looks at oh, a girl that has a major presence on social media or an adult entertainer or does this femdom muscle worship thing, it, it, he looks at it, it at, as like you have one foot in the relationship, one foot out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're with me, but you're, you're, you're halfway you're out. You're, you're almost, yeah. you're, it's almost like buying a car, but the dealer said you got to keep the for sale sign on. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And so any yeah. guy that respects himself, or especially when you get to a certain age, like when you get to my age and you have a career and you have a home and you have money and you've attained these assets, you kind of want somebody that fits you, mm-hmm. and, but not somebody that but, but headbutts you. You don't want, you know, mm-hmm. so somebody that's going to be too dominant. Yeah. So the only type of guy that you're going to be able to, to get is going to be a guy that believes mm-hmm. that what that's what he deserves mm-hmm. yeah and yeah. then in the long run you're never going to respect him yeah because nobody I, can respect yeah. somebody that kisses your ass it doesn't work that way <laughs> no it doesn't it doesn't and i i i think i saw uh an adult entertainment a husband and a wife and he was the the producer director and and they're not even together anymore and that now happens she's older and he threw her to the curb and now he's with another i'm like you guys, I mean, you just have to. You, you know. made your bed. Yeah. And that leads us to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm going. Yeah, I do. That's <laughs> Killer, cool. Killer Sally. Yes, yes. And I watched that last week and I said to myself, I, I, I got to get Linda Murray on. I've had Jay uh-huh. Cutler on. I'm friends with Ron Harris. I got to get her on. Yes. So for people who did not watch the documentary Killer Sally, it is about Sally McNeil, who was married to Ray McNeil, who was a professional bodybuilder. That's right. And she wound up murdering him and getting 25 years for a second degree manslaughter. That's right. And they contacted you because at the time you were the the reigning Miss Olympia. Mm -hmm. They contacted you to interview and give your opinions on what was happening at the time. Mm -hmm. So can you take us through that or take me through Mm -hmm. that rather? Yeah. Um, yeah. When they first reached out to me, they sent me several emails. And first I was like, nah, I want to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. Like just the top, the title, 
killer sour. I was like, oh, it sounds like one of them dark, mm-hmm. strange, you know, you would go down this place and then I'm pulled into this conversation. That mm-hmm. So um, they, they promised, well, we'll ask you some questions in regards to, he said, because you don't really know, did you, do you know Sally? Yes. I, I knew Sally. I know Sally. And did I know Ray? Absolutely. Did we work together? So, yeah. Um, they said they wanted to focus on me talking about the industry during that time for women finances, because they knew the other side of the story that she was wrestling and Mm -hmm. doing some things to make a living to pay for his supplements and Mm -hmm. his ability to compete at the Olympia. So yeah, they did a great job. It it was, I think it was very thorough. I thought it was fantastic because it takes you on this mental roller coaster Mm -hmm. because you, I I watched the first episode and I go, this Watch this first episode, and I go, this poor woman, my <laughs> God. Yes. I'm like, this woman was a battered woman, you know? And then you go to the second episode, and you go, aha, oh. she's full of shit. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Everybody, that's what it was great, how they did that. It's yeah. unbelievable. And yeah, um, I, I saw that, I saw that, you know, that's one of the common things, like that, my first time around in the 90s, being a female bodybuilder and there not being many of us and there's predominantly men mm-hmm. and I'm around Sean Ray, the whole group, Ray, all of the guys. And it's two women. The golden age. Yes. The golden age. I get to see these guys. Mm-hmm. I get to see what they do, you know, and then I know and knew the women that they were in relationship with these guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw what they did, not in their presence. And I saw the women that were like, you're not going to get far from me. I'm going to keep you within reach, within sight. And Sally was that person. Okay. Right. I thought so. She was. And so yeah. they, they, they depicted that correctly. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I uh, I actually assumed that those were his kids in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and um, even a man to accept stepkids back even back then. Again, today it's a little yes. different, but even back then, for a man to accept stepkids, it's that's mm-hmm. that wasn't. Mm-hmm. So he had to be a certain type of guy as well. I, I feel Absolutely. like uh, since he's not alive, we weren't able to see his the type of person he was. He physically looked dominating right that's why in that first episode it was like oh my god this man beat her and but meanwhile there was never a, she kept saying that she broke her nose i mean did you ever see rocky marciano's nose broke yeah. you know and hers was like perfect, perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know and oh and she kept saying what well, he, he would choke me he would choke me so when you see the size of him you were like oh right and it was almost like she was being manipulative in the interview Mm-hmm. right she wasn't oh, yeah. being right and then you get to episode two and they start interviewing the children they start interviewing his friends and they start interviewing the athletes and you go uh okay this person is um has some kind of personality disorder it seems as if. right right you know? right well i agree with you i mean because you know like fact of the matter is you can only be responsible for yourself and obviously there was some manipulation yeah <laughs> going on Mm-hmm. They are on both of their parts, to be honest. Um, what was the um, what was the general uh, consensus when you were when this all happened? You were the reigning Miss Olympia when when Sally actually killed Ray. What was the uh, the opinion of the most of the majority of the athletes behind closed doors? Did they think that Ray was abusive, or did they think that Sally was manipulative? Or did they think that it was mutual? Because statistically, the majority of of uh, domestic violence abuses, it is mutual. Mm-hmm. So what was the, the opinion? The consensus, the opinion, I believe, initially was that she was jealous and controlling. And um, she finally just lost it. Mm-hmm. It was never the opinion that we did not have the opinion that he was an abuser. Mm -hmm. I did not 
ever hear him talk down to her. Uh, he was, he appeared to be somewhat quiet. Like, um, mm -hmm. so I know Sally said that the bodybuilders threw her under the bus and that all of her wrestling uh, clients were, that they supported her. That's right. That's right. So I remember her saying that, and yeah. and I felt that I I would agree with what she said. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the 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 wrestling clients they were I would go as far as to say they were in love with her. Yeah, they had this inf they had this fat infatuation with her. They they you know they had this. My you know my guy. We have to we have to help her. This is you know mm -hmm. it, 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 good. And wouldn't you even think also that because they like dominant, strong women and people that like the what's that S and M or whatever that right. that maybe in their head there was kind of some yeah. something uh, that maybe. was attractive about a person that was that absolutely that could kill somebody a hundred percent absolutely you you hit the nail on the head at one hundred percent you know and. and and there's this, you know, there's also a belief that, oh, well, maybe if I help, she'll, she'll, she'll notice me more, you know, she, uh -huh. because th these are men that don't, th these are men that don't normally do well with women. That's right. Correct. And, and then, they, and then they, they, this is how they get, uh, they, this is how they get noticed from women by paying to do this and paying <laughs> to do that. And it goes into, you know, the deeper, you know, issues of uh, femdom and muscle worship and so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. But what blew me away was that somebody married her after she mm -hmm. got out of prison. That blew me away. Like if you, okay, mm -hmm. if you told me, oh, I got a girl for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. Wow. There's, there, there's, there's one thing you kind of have to get around, but really it's, 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 it's just, you know, she did 25 years in prison for second degree murder of her ex-husband. And I go, and I go, yeah. <laughs> I'll wow. need it. It. I know. You know, and it's just like, there's a, there's a, there's a reason why they say men are stupid. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I truly believe that there's a reason why they say men are stupid and women are crazy. And you watch uh -huh. that, you watch that, that documentary and it, there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm feeling you. Oh, it was unbelievable. All right. So let's talk about um, some fun stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I actually had the pleasure of meeting Iris Kyle at last year's Miss Olympia. By mistake, my wife asked her where the Olympia Expo was, not knowing who she was. Uh -huh. and, and I said, um, and I said to my, I, I tried stopping my wife. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I and I was like, and I apologize. I was like, I'm sorry, uh, Miss Kyle. Uh, my wife doesn't know that you're like one of the greatest bodybuilders that ever lived. Sorry. And then I told her afterwards who that was, and my wife was like, <gasps> I didn't know. yeah, yeah, because yeah. she only knows bodybuilding from from me, right? Right. So I had the pleasure of meeting her. When she came out, was it like, was it similar to when? Because Dorian Yates, I don't remember what interview it was. Dorian Yates said, I think he was on Joe Rogan. Dorian, Dorian Yates said the only bodybuilder that blew him away was when he saw Ronnie win the Olympia. Mm -hmm. Was that similar to when Iris Kyle came out? Because when Iris Kyle came out, I, I feel like she kind of changed the game because she was more, she was as if she was like the Ronnie Coleman of bodybuilding. She was this chiseled, hard as nail, striated, muscular woman that was like dominant. Yeah. You know, what do you think? Or, or was there another woman that you looked like that, at that? I mean, I think it was for me, it was Kim. It was Kim. OK, it okay. was Kim. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think, honestly, like if you go back and you look at men and women bodybuilding, like when Kim came out and working with her husband, Chad, like that changed the game. And you started to see athletes on stage, you know, looking like Dorian. And then it went on into those guys, you know, um, that that changed the game. I think, um, yeah. 
Because yeah. with Iris, Iris changed the game, I think. Almost she to changed- a point. It was she changed yeah. the game almost to a point where they were like almost to the point where the industry was like, we have to stop this. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. Yeah, I think she she definitely did. But initially, when she came on the scene, um, because her and I competed against each other, and I can't remember. I know she competed in two thousand and two and two thousand and four, mm-hmm. and I believe she competed maybe prior to that. But it, but I can, came back in two thousand two, two thousand three. I beat her in two and three, and then she beat me in two thousand and four. I got second, she got first, I retired. And it was normal, kind of, you know, it was nothing about, it was never, it was never a situation when I was on stage with Iris that I looked over at her and I just thought, God. Because by that time I, working with Chad, I knew how to, you know, manipulate that last week of like, water and carbs and all of that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to to get that really dry, hard look. Right. But I think where she changed the game is that she just had this, she had this approach very much like a man. Right. In my opinion. No, she did. She absolutely did. She just did. And that's where the game changed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was, and um, uh, I mean, I don't know if she had anything to do with it, but they um, they stopped women's bodybuilding in the Olympia. They stopped women's bodybuilding in, Ar- in the Arnold, and the Arnold didn't even um, the Arnold didn't even uh, continue it still to this day. Mm-hmm. And then when they started Wings of Strength, I remember her going on RX Muscle with Dave Palumbo. I'm pretty sure it was RX Muscle. Yeah, yeah, and, it was. It was, and and her really being pissed off at Wings of Strength because she wanted to compete again, and 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 they said, well, you have to qualify and she's like what do you mean i'm 10 times miss olympia I, why would i have to qualify yeah. which right. i i understood but i also yeah. thought i also thought maybe they don't want her maybe yeah. they're scared because of mm-hmm. the fat of what she brings the energy that she brings and the type of right you know yeah i mean that, that great way to put it like the energy that she brings mm-hmm. like the energy that she brings that's the problem mm-hmm. in my opinion it's not even you know, it's it's just the energy. It's hmm. Her 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 energy. Okay. She she wasn't it what I saw when I returned in 2002, the women and the way the women worked together and the, the camaraderie and everything, the energy was totally different. From when I competed in the in the 90s and 96 and 97, mm-hmm. like Kim Shazewski and I are friends. She kicked my ass. We still, we all communicated. We worked together. Mm-hmm. We had challenges with women's bodybuilding from my first Miss Olympia. It's always been a challenge. So how are we going to flourish if we don't stick together? If right. we don't support each other. Mm-hmm. And the the thing with Iris is it's about it's about Iris and Iris alone. And that was, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, and and I never like I said, I had the pleasure of meeting her. She was very nice to me. She was very nice to my wife. I never sat down to get an interview. I reached out to her a couple of times. She said that she's under contract, but she can't. And I understand because I've had that had that happen before. But recently, she has had problems with uh, uh, Milos um, at, at her gym. She asked Milos to, to leave her gym. Um, yeah, I heard I, about I, that. I don't know the details. I know Milos went on, again, Rx Muscle and, um, and told the whole story. But we only got his side of the story. We didn't get her side of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I, if you, here's the thing, though. If you hire Milos, you know what he's famous for. He's famous for these giant sets. And for people who don't know that are listening, giant sets basically is you almost have to take over the whole gym yeah. because you, because you go from one movement to another movement to another. So you go one machine, one machine, one machine, free weights, free weights, free weights, free weights and it's nonstop. It's nonstop. It's nonstop. Mm-hmm. And he truly believes in this style. And obviously it works because he, he has brought tremendous champions to the stage. 
And then supposedly what had happened was she said that he kind of, it, it gets in the way of the other people at the, at the gym, which on the outside looking at you can understand. Right. And then she yeah. asked him to leave. But if you know Milos, that's how he trains. And everybody knows Milos. He's fucking famous. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and I've, I've tried doing his work. I've tried doing his work. I've tried <laughs> copying it from, from YouTube. It's impossible. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. you know, um, uh, so, and now, uh, again, I don't know, uh, you know, I've never got, we never got uh, Iris' side of the story, but now he's working at Dragon's Lair and he brought all his athletes over, over there at Dragon's Lair. So I, I don't really know the full story because we never got Iris' side of the story, but um, it's, that se- it seems to be accurate. That's, mm-hmm. that's all I know. And if I ever have the pleasure of having her on and interviewing her, you know, mm-hmm. I'll be very nice and respectful, just like mm-hmm. I am to you. And, and oh yeah, you know, I would. Yeah, ne- she's a, I, to me, she's an amazing athlete. She's a legend. She's this, a total legend. She's a amazing, legend. Amazing, mad respect for her ability to focus and yeah. um, be consistent and be a woman and say, "Listen, I'm gonna go balls to the wall. I don't care. That's I'm gonna right. show up. That's I'm gonna be the hardest, the baddest. Period. That's the bomb. I, I'm feeling you. Right. However, all I'm saying is, and this is coming from me, and I'm not saying he, her, it's sometimes it's her, her energy in a way. And I had to let go and say, that's who she is. Right. That's how she rolls. And that's, I respect her. That's it. Her yeah. You, as a bodybuilder, you can't not respect her. You can't. You can't. Yes. And I've had, I, and can't I'm not I'm, respect her. And that leads me to a, the next question. I don't know if you ever had this question before, and I've never heard anybody ask this question to you or Iris or anybody like that. I've had, I've had plenty of discussions and I've heard plenty of podcasts about bodybuilding of the top five greatest, the top 10 greatest, so on and so forth. And you go down the list. It's always Dorian, Ronnie, uh, Arnold, uh, Sergio Olivia senior, um, Dexter, uh, Jay Cutler, you go, and then you go into the uncrowned Mr. Uh, Mr. Olympia the Kevin Lavrones, the Sean Ray's, the Kai Greens, nobody ever mentions Linda Murray or Iris Kyle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to me, if you're looking at bodybuilding, that's almost disrespectful because mm-hmm. you want as many as Ronnie mm-hmm. and um, Lee Haney, mm-hmm. and nobody won as many as Iris Kyle. Right, right. Right. So, so what do you think? I agree. About that? What do I think about that? Um, yeah. Kind of, it's like you get used to it. <laughs> you just. Well, I might be. Am I the first person that ever brought that up? Yeah. 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 Yes. Because um, a lot of times, you know, especially now with the internet, and I do a lot of work on the internet as far as like researching the ath- athletes and knowing athlete history bios and stuff that's out there. So I'm always seeing things that are, that's out there. And I, and when I see that the greatest 10 greatest bodybuilders yeah. of all time, I, I do go on there and I scroll through to look at who they have there. And I'm like, Oh, no woman, we, none of us rated like, right, 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 you know? Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. First time that someone's asked me that question. Be- on, yeah. First time. Cause if you look at numbers and championships, one, you two have to be in that conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's almost no way around it. Mm-hmm. You have to be in that conversation because this isn't a team sport, mm-hmm. right? Like, Right. If you look at a team sport, it's a little different. Like Yogi Berra has 10 rings, but that's because he was a coach and he was on a winning team with other performers. You, you, this is an individual sport mm-hmm. and everything relies on you to win the entire thing. There's nobody else helping you. Mm-hmm. So you have to, Linda Murray and Iris Kyle have to be at least in that discussion. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you never, and you never are. Yeah. And, and you know, in, in, to me, for that, for this reason, what as a woman in a sport, like you said, going way back, like, and even today, like it's not the norm for a woman to have big biceps and bulging, you know, back right, muscles. Right, right. <laughs> it's just not the norm. Mm-hmm. And for a woman to make that decision 
in the 80s, in the 90s, today, Mm -hmm. we get grief. Absolutely. Like we get grief. And that's one of the reasons that it was easy to somewhat throw us under the bus. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, okay, it's acceptable for a man to be, you know, 300 pounds and chiseled in the face and Mm -hmm. he's using steroids, but it's not okay for a woman to be like, to assume or to say she's using steroids. She looks like a, like, so we'll just, we'll just kind of tuck them away over here a little bit to the side, you know? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I think for, when I look at all of my Miss Olympias, Iris Kyle, um, Corey Everson, every single female bodybuilder, like I have mad respect because I know, like even our family members are a little uncomfortable. Yeah, absolutely. About, about that decision. Like, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, we spoke about this earlier. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it happens to be true. And they did trolling. The trolling is worse now for so, because of social media, because there's no consequence. Mm-hmm. Because if we if you're with your boyfriend or your husband and uh, somebody says something to, to, to your face, he's going to get punched in the face by your boyfriend or your husband. But mm-hmm. with social right. media, there's no consequence. The terrible yeah. things, I mean, the terrible things that have been said, it's just, it's disgusting. The first time I, inv- I, I, the first female bodybuilder I ever interviewed was Rita West. And I was a huge fan of her because yeah. of, because Ripped. of how, pow- oh, because of powerlifting. She was first a powerlifter and she held a squat record for, I think, almost 10 years. Mm-hmm. And she's at 148 pounds. She squatted. I think it was 675 or something. Like that. Wow. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. So I had saw her on RX Muscle and I was reading all the comments and I'm like, oh, I can't believe this. So when I first interviewed her, I shut the comments off. I was like, no, I, nobody's going to disrespect her on, on here. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, and I've had her on like three or four times since then. She's, she's now a friend actually. Um, so Social media, it makes it even worse. And the, that's one of the one of the great reasons I respect female bodybuilders is because, you know, hey, look, you know, just I got to just brush it off and do what I got to do. Right, um, right. Um, now, that being said, I'm not a big fan of the bikini girls <laughs> because I f- hey, ever go to an NPC show. There's like 40,000 bikini girls because yeah. every yeah. girl with like boob implants thinks they could be bikini girls. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but OK. Anyway. <laughs> so today, Andrea Shaw is the reigning Miss Olympia. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I, I like her a lot because she's very, I don't know her. I never had the chance of interviewing yes. her. You know, I, I never had the chance of, but the interviews I've seen of her and when she wins, she's got this great personality, this tremendous yes. energy. I saw when she won the truck and she was in it, she was like freaking out and everything. Like it just, it just makes you love her. Yes. And at the same time, She's uh, she looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Do you think she's going to go on to be as dominant as you were as dominant as Iris was? Mm-hmm. I think that she will. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I and here's the thing. I think when when you have won eight Miss Olympias, you've been in 11 Miss Olympias like I have in your or Ronnie Coleman, like we know. Like the journey and she's perfect for it. Right. She's perfect to do it based on everything that she has complete package that she has her physique, her, her personality, her ability to stay focused, um, discipline. You're not going to hear no, a lot of drama about her. You know, Never, yeah. she has, she has everything. She really, really does. And, um, and and I can say this, knowing what I, my journey, and if a person were to ask me, like when I see an athlete and it's like, I what I wanted, could I do that again? I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. Like I kind of know too much, mm. you know? And um just time will tell, but she right. has everything to do it. Right, right, right. There's right, right. no question about it. Okay. All I'm right. so I'm so super proud of women's bodybuilding now. You know, yeah. I was proud of it then. I've always been proud of it, but it's 
It's, it's everybody good. says the same thing you just said about her. Okay. Okay. Good. good. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you one more question and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to let you go. And it has been an absolute pleasure having you on. Um, I have this show and I'm also have a show on MD, which is more entertaining. It's more about the guys and, and, the, and bodybuilding. We talk a lot about bodybuilding will be goof off and stuff like that. And I had the pleasure of having Alicia Young on with us at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, she had told me, and she said it on the show that she's planning to make a comeback in 2023. And I asked her the same question. I said, do you think Andrea Shaw is going to be as dominant as a Linda Murray or, or Iris Kyle? And she said, that depends who's competing. And she very confidently said, because I'm going to be competing next year. And okay. I'm the, and she said, I beat Andrea Shaw in 2019 at the Chicago Pro. And she goes, I'm not coming back to take second. Okay. <laughs> I believe that. And what you, yeah. what is, so what do you think about that statement? Well, you know what? And what I think, I mean, Alicia Young, she has a beautiful physique, nice, full muscle bellies. Um, she would just have to come, come correct. Yeah, you ain't kidding. You, you know what I'm saying, and it's, it's, it's two different physiques. It totally is. You know, it's it's almost like yes. it's almost like it's almost like totally. comparing a Big Rami to a Brandon Curry. That's right, right. Big Rami, because you right. know Alicia is going to have the size, and she's yeah. going to come and chisel. But he, and then there's Andrea Shaw, who is this small waist and this beautiful flowing uh, muscular physique. It's almost like comparing apples to oranges. And the only way you're going to be able to judge is when they're on stage together. And that's the only way. Yeah. When they're on stage together. That's it. That's you it. Know? Yeah. No. Yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of athletes say a lot of things and um, it, it takes a lot of courage to actually like follow through, get on that stage and, just do what you have to do to be as ripped and lean. And I mean, it's a lot. Yeah. So, no, I'm kidding. No, you I'm know. kidding. We'll see. <laughs> I hope, you know, I hope she does come back. It would make things uh, very interesting in, in women's bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you want to plug anything that you want to talk about any projects you're working on anything like that? Mm, let's see. Well, I know you have the wings of strength um, uh, YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right, so go ahead. I have FemFlex Friday. That's and right. That's a whole lot of, Woo, like production and getting the topics and, and trying to find interesting topics that people will want to watch and mm -hmm. get followers. Um, and I I have a um, supplement line, Crystal Planet Nutrition, that I'm oh, okay. that yep, Crystal Planet Nutrition. And um Jake and I are partners in that now. So we just put out a, um, it's in being, it's in production right now. It's okay. an NO2 product. All right. Do you have a, a website it. yet or no? Yes. It's crystalplanetnutrition.com. Okay. I will make sure that that is in the yep. description area so people could uh, yes. just click it and go. So what kind of products do you guys have now? Right now we, we have anti-aging. So we have ashwagandha. Okay. Um, no two. So we're working on products uh, that cross both lines. Like for example, No two. It's a popular bodybuilding supplement, mm -hmm. but it's also super popular um, in the anti aging people that have issues with heart and blood flow. Because um, I want to reach that market, and where I'm at in my age now. <laughs> Yeah. Anti-aging is the thing for me. I'm all into like those types of products. So. You don't seem to age though. Uh-huh. I'm telling you, you're, you're, uh, when I look at you, I see Angela Bassett. I swear uh -huh. to God, uh -huh. I, the most beautiful women. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, and it just don't seem to age. Yeah, and like I you. said, I remember watching the American Horror Story, seeing Angela Bassett and my uh -huh. wife sat next to me and I'm going, God. Damn. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, Thank you. You're very yeah, well. but I, yeah, I'm really into the anti-aging products and okay. collagen peptides and, you know, things that um, you just change direction, okay. you know? Yeah. Well, I will make sure that that is in. I will make sure the, uh, the link to, what was it? Femflex Friday? Fem, fem, yeah. Femflex Friday. Fem okay. is F-E-M-M-E -M -M -E flex, F-L-E-X. Friday, we're okay. out. We come out every Friday, and it's a 
uh, it's Jake you, Wood production. And it's you and I forgot your partner's name. Yes, it's it's me, Alina Popa. That's it. It's right. also uh, Whitney Jones. That's it. Miss Olympia. Okay. And we also have two other. We're, we're starting to do more of a roundtable type uh, discussion. And yeah. uh, we're including Camille Perriott. She's a bikini pro. And mm. Wendy Fortino. She's a figure pro. Oh, okay. I've seen, I've seen one day before. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right, Linda, thank you so much for coming on. It is a pleasure and an honor to have interviewed one of the greatest bodybuilders ever. And yes. it, it really, I mean, um, I've been a fan of bodybuilding since I'm 14 years old and whether, yeah. whether a uh, man or woman, so much love and much respect. And thank you so much for coming on. You have no idea what what this is for me it's great that's awesome john thank you for having me on the show of course thank you and we'll we'll definitely talk soon all right all right (laughs) bye-bye